Thank you very much again for participating in our first Gaster, and we'll see you this evening or now at the AGM. Right, fantastic. We're going to get straight on the way um, with the AGM, and I'm going to hand over to ALT's president, Martin Weller, to open the proceedings. So please, before Martin gets us underway, make sure you sign in. This is an important part of our annual governance. Signing in sheets are going round. Also, voting cards are going round. If you are a member, there will be instructions on the screen on how to vote at each resolution, and you should have a card to vote with. My colleagues here from the staff team will help you vote if you're not sure how or you're not sure if you're eligible. We have a list to check. So thank you very much for joining us at the AGM this afternoon. Also, just before we get underway, we're looking for two people to volunteer to be tellers at the AGM count votes. I have one volunteer. Thank you very much, James. Any other volunteers? Um, Elizabeth, perfect, thank you very much. So Elizabeth and James will be the tellers. During the voting, please could you get, um, stand up and then stand at the front and don't forget to count your own vote. <laughs> Not really. No, I'm, I'm okay here, we're okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go from here. Okay. Okay, hi everyone. So thanks for coming to the uh, AGM. Uh, I can't promise it's going to be quite as fun as interactive as the gas but you know, we'll lose. So uh, thanks for coming. Uh, so I also want to extend our thanks uh, and a welcome to uh, people from other organisations. So King, as you said, from uh, ETAG in Canada, uh, Tom and the ILTA crowd from Ireland, uh, Tamden Trust Jones from the European Association for Technology and Arts Learning, and Kath Gladden from the Association of Employment and Learning Providers. So Sheila and I are just going to give some brief highlights of the past year. Do you want to go first, Sheila? Yeah, sorry, I'll just, um, yeah, well, it's, it's been a really um, action-packed year for us uh, over the last, last year. Um, and you can see some highlights there. We've had the lovely Brian, again, doing some graphics for it. For us. I suppose there were a lot of um, highlights in terms of our journal, um, in terms of the OER conference, and in terms of this conference as well, 25th year, um, there's been a lot of work um, by all the people in the committee, and uh, yeah, it's just been almost too much to share, and we are a bit short of time. So, Martin, is there anything else you want to highlight? Um, just say uh, I've gone wrong already. I meant to ask for apologies <laughs> and proxy votes. So, do you have those? Uh... Yep, no apologies. One, uh, six proxy votes. So, 
But just uh, on my highlights here, I think just to say, I think Mark's kind of, there's a transition period for Alt, uh, which Marilyn and the trustees have kind of very skillfully negotiated. I think particularly this movement to be a distributed organisation is kind of very uh, important for Alt and um, the structure we have now kind of points towards longer term stability, I think. And so I think it's important for any modern organisation to always reflect on its practices and Alt kind of uh, exemplifies that. Uh, I also have to say, as, as the OER guy, I kind of the OER conference, the one in Bristol this year, and, and every year is kind of a real highlight for me. I think it's become a real international fixture, and I think that's really moved on over the past few years. Okay, so on, on to the, uh, the business. So um, approval of the minutes of the last annual general meeting held in Liverpool on 6th September 2017. There's an accurate record of the meeting. I'm going to need a proposer and a seconder. Peter and, uh, and I need a seconder. James. So those are approved as an accurate record of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, I, we don't have any matters arising. Are there any matters arising that anyone wants to raise? No matters arising. Thank you. Uh, so we zip through that. Good. So um, thank you. We're back on time. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> so moving on to the uh, annual report and accounts. I'm very pleased to hand over to Daniel for this part. Thank you. Um, so, uh, welcome to this meeting, and thank you for attending. My name is Daniel Clark. I'm the Honorary Treasurer of Old, um, and it's my privilege to present to you the um, annual report and accounts. Um, this is a really important part of our governance and our commitment to openness, that we are transparent with you about the resources that we get, the membership fees and so on, and how we're using them. So, um, it is important that, uh, that these are made available to you. And when I was looking at them and reviewing them, I was thinking, um, I've just finished three years as Treasurer of Old. Um, and as Martin said, in that time, we've seen some, some really big changes in how Alt runs and, and operates. So we've moved uh, to being a, an independent organization, a charitable incorporated organization, uh, which means the trustees are not personally liable, which is a huge relief to all of us. Um, it, we've moved away from our partnership with Brooks to become a virtual organization and directly employing people. Um, and um, we deliberately kept a lot of that invisible to you our members um, because it shouldn't interrupt the way we sort of deliver on our strategy but over time this should make us a much more sort of agile organization and, uh, and well able to cope with, uh, with what the future throws at us. Um, now becoming an independent organization and employing people directly does bring a little bit of extra risk uh, and it makes it that much more important that we are financially stable and that we are um, say careful with our resources. So I'm glad to say in the current year, the year ended uh, last January, um, we did record a, a small surplus of £24,000, um, so that's, that's a good result, clearly uh, being careful on that side. Um, what we've actually done is decided to transfer um, a bit of that money to increase a reserve that we hold. Um, so we have, um, the reserve is na uh, now standing at £160,000 in our accounts. Now that reserve doesn't have any legal effect. Um, what it is, it's a sort of rainy day fund. It's, um, it's a marker to us as trustees, to you as members, that the money is set aside for emergencies. Um, it's been calculated as uh, six months of operating expenditure of Alt. So the idea is that if there was a absolute catastrophe, you know, every bit of income dried up, Alt could run for six months, which would at least buy us some breathing space. Now that's not something we expect to happen. Um, this is just us trying to be prudent. Um, it is in line with best practice in the charity sector. So that's something that you'll see um, going through the accounts is, is a slight increase in that reserve. The other thing I'd like to um, draw your attention to, it, and I hope will be of assurance to you as our, our members and stakeholders, um, is that we have had, as, as usual, an independent audit of our accounts. So auditors who are not connected with us, who are professionals, have come in, reviewed our accounts, reviewed our financial record keeping, uh, signed off their audit report, uh, which is quite lengthy. <coughs> but what it amounts to is that uh, they look at whether there is anything in the accounts that they could consider to be misleading or misstated, and basically they're saying there isn't. They, they are they are happy that the accounts are true and fair stated. So hopefully that's something that sort of provides assurance to you that um, you know what we're presenting here is, uh, uh, is is correct. And the only other thing I wanted to um, mention, just sort of reflect on, really, is that um, if you look through the accounts. Um, 
Sometimes uh, there's an impression that Alt is, it feels like a very sort of large organization with a lot of reach and you know, sort of big staff and offices everywhere and stuff like that. Um, you look at these and our, our total turnover is 485,000 a year, which in the scheme of things is not vast. Um, and the fact that on that level of resource so much is accomplished really is testament to the amount of time and energy and effort that, that people put in. Um, and I think that, again, that's just something worth reflecting on as we, uh, as we look through these. So that was everything I had to say about sort of presenting the accounts to you, but I'm very happy to take any questions um, if there are any. Yes, apologies to Bella who requested that I present the accounts through the medium of interpretive dance, but, <laughs> but having, having considered that carefully, I thought perhaps it might, might go a bit wrong, so sorry, Bella. <laughs> Next year, maybe. Okay, so I'm um, going to propose a resolution that the annual report and accounts be adopted. Um, we need a proposer and seconder for that, if I may. Proposer, Your Honour. And seconder, Nick. Um, do we need to have a. Okay. If you are entitled to vote, you should have a voting card. And I think Daniel will now ask for first four votes for, then against, and then abstentions, and will also count proxy votes. So please keep your hand in the air until you've actually voted and be counted. So, okay. so the resolution is um, that the annual report counts be adopted. Those in favor? So yeah, if you keep your hands up, please, thanks. We're having a recount. Uh, 43. Um, and we counted six proxy votes for, so 49. Okay. For those against? And abstentions? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I just want to say, uh, uh, yes, um, I was, uh, as every year, I'm very thankful that we have Daniel as a trustee because this stuff is beyond me. So <laughs> it was someone I can really trust in what they're doing. So thank you very much, Daniel. Um, the next part of this is to just approve the appointment of the auditors for the, the next year's accounts. Um, so I need a proposer and a seconder uh, to appoint David Cadwallader and co accountants for next year. Proposer, James and Elizabeth, uh, and I think we vote on this again. Um, we don't have to vote. We don't have to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, approved. Um, so that brings us on to uh, award of honorary life membership. Um, I chaired the uh, the panel for this. Uh, I want to say the. The, the person who's about to get it. I, I think we do a kind of Oscars thing, don't we, where we don't reveal who it is. So the person who's <laughs> the winner, um, the, it was a unanimous decision uh, to give this person life membership. They've been a, a stalwart uh, member of the of the alt community throughout their career and have contributed a lot to the um, UK sector in particular. Uh, I'm going to let Sheila say uh, a few words because she is, is better placed. I think I've been really lucky in my career that I've worked with and continue to work with an, a number of very inspiring women, many of whom are in the room uh, today. And uh, I think I'm really excited about this award because the recipient of this honorary award, um, you know, it's the highest honor that we give and it's, um, you know, a rec recognition of a very significant contribution to the organization by an individual. And I think this year's individual, um, she's played a role in ALT I think probably since its outset. She's been a trustee, she's been a vice chair, a chair, she's also hosted a, a, a conference. And even when she stepped back from her role in governance, she still was a really active part of the community. Um, 
and she's done many, many things, including setting up the Old Scotland group. I think um, in everything she does, she brings grace, intelligence, criticality, and her scholarly practice. And most of all, and most important for me, her sense of fun and laughter. Um, and I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever laughed as much in my life as when I've been working with this person, even at times when our laughter was tinged maybe with a bit of hysteria. Um, but I feel so privileged to have worked alongside her for the past five years. And I'm still in denial that this person has taken early retirement. I'm still hoping that she's just going to walk back in from holiday in next week. But um, at this point, I would just like to say it just gives me huge pleasure to present this year's Honorary Life Membership to Linda Kreener. Thank you everyone for this. This is, I'm quite overwhelmed really and feel very, very honoured to receive this. Thank you to all the Alt Trustees and also to all fellow members for this award. I do think something that's, that's um, given to you by your peers is one of the most meaningful awards that you can receive in your career and I'm really grateful to get this. Now Alt has certainly been very dear to my heart throughout my career. I actually started my career in learning technology in January 1993, so it was the first, it's the same year as, as ALT was established. So it's been there all along, and I have to say that any involvement in time that I've given to ALT, I've had back tenfold. In terms of professional networks, deepening understanding of the field, and most importantly, making friends. Friendship and fun, I think we've had a lot of that and there's been a lot of that in this year's conference as well. So it's been a privilege to be involved in ALT and to have played a small part in its development over the years. I'm very pleased as well that ALT Scotland is now a thriving part of the ALT family and that membership is growing year on year. So thanks again to everyone. I hope to keep in touch and here's to the next 25 years. Thank you. Linda. Um, so we've made some uh, changes to the constitution this year uh, for ALT, which uh, Sheila and Marin are going to run you through now. Sheila, would you like to say a few words maybe just in general and I can maybe help talk through yeah. the technicalities? Absolutely. So as Daniel and Martin have both alluded to, um, it's been the last couple of years there's been quite a lot of changes to the, the organisation, particularly around our new strategy, which we launched last year. And this year, by becoming a virtual organisation and moving away from books. Um, at the same time as doing that, that we have um, felt that actually we needed to maybe make some changes to our governance structures to support the, the organisation better. And obviously, we've changed our, our charitable status as well. So what we want to do is take you through some of the proposed um, changes. Um, and the reason we're doing this is really for the stability of the organization and thinking towards the next 25 years. Um, and also, as it says in the slide there, it's really bringing us in line with best practice for the with the Charity Commission as well. So we really feel this is timely and necessary um, for the future development of the organization and association. Anything you'd like to add at that point, Marin? No, I think... Um I think we can probably jump right in and just go through the key points. As Sheila was saying, there are a number of changes to be proposed, and the first one is regarding how we appoint roles of the president, the chair, and the vice chair in ALT. So as many of you will be familiar, currently and for the past, this has been an annually rotating role. And I think we've identified that while we've been extremely fortunate as a professional body to have very able and engaged trustees that make the life of staff like myself really easy and straightforward, it is a huge challenge to find really well-informed, good quality trustees on an annual basis to take the most responsible role in our organization. And it also means that 
we as staff provide much greater continuity. And as we all think that the membership should have you know, the greatest perspective on what we do as a sort of from a strategic perspective, I really welcome this proposal to extend the term of these most important trustee roles, the most active, the most responsible for the governance to the Charity Commission as well, to bring them in line with the same terms of service that all the other trustees have. It is quite unusual to have the chair of an organization rotate annually. And um, over the last six years as CEO of ALB, I've been very fortunate to have six wonderful chairs to work with, but we do only work together for 12 months before you know, the next one arrives. So this makes great practical sense and does minimize our risk. And similarly, as we are quite a, a streamlined, small organization and we want to use the resources as best we can, we've also proposed that the maximum number of trustees overall goes from 13 to 10, which will still give us enough breadth to have the governance that we really need, but doesn't mean that we have to unnecessarily have larger committees that we really need to. So I think those are the specific changes to the boards and the roles. And we're moving on now to explain regarding the, how trustees are elected and appointed. So as you are familiar as members, at the moment, all trustees are elected openly. Anyone who is a member can express an interest in roles, but we don't advertise, as other charities do, specific job descriptions for, let's say, being a treasurer. And in Daniel, we actually have the first treasurer who has an accountancy background and is fully qualified to advise us financially. So we want to catch up with what other charities, like the Wikimedia Foundation, for example, are doing. And we want to make the recruitment of the trustees more transparent so it's very clear what you volunteer to do, because it is a role of great responsibility. So instead of appointing all trustees in the same manner, we propose that half of all trustees will still be elected openly and members can express an interest and they will be the same as they are now, but that they are specific roles, including the chair, the treasurer and the vice chair, who will recruit with job descriptions and that instead of having open elections, which can sometimes lead to those who are most popular or well-known voices being elected, we will give the existing board the, the final say in their appointment. Again, this is probably quite commonplace in most charities, but a big step for us and a big change. So I'm just gonna pause there because I think, Sheila, we might wanna pause for questions briefly in case anybody has questions on these two points. Absolutely. So if you do have questions, please raise your hand or let us know. Okay, there don't seem to be any questions right now, so should we move on? I think um, I think there's two more changes that we've had a lot of feedback on from membership in the last year as the organization has grown. And one of the areas it's grown specifically over the last few years is member groups. When I joined ALT 10 years ago, um, ALT Scotland was kind of the member group and the M25 group wasn't yet an ALT group. Um, but now we have member groups all across the UK and our governance hasn't really caught up with that. Our governance doesn't provide a direct avenue for those member groups from Northern Ireland, from Wales, from all parts of the UK and different parts of the country to have a voice directly in the governance. So the idea is that we'll make an overarching committee which is really going to be a new forum for member groups to talk to each other and with each other and have more direct opportunity to collaborate alongside the conference committees, alongside the journal editors, the blog editors, and all other groups involved in the governance of ALT, and that the assembly will be chaired by um, the president. Now, as you can imagine, I actually tried to make a slide for you of what our current structure looks like, and I ended up having 109 arrows. And I gave up, if I'm honest with you, because I thought no one will believe that this is how ALT is currently organized and how many different you know, um, indirect reporting lines and direct responsibilities there are. So this is why we're proposing this constitutional change today, but there'll be a transition period until the constitution comes fully into effect, which is at the next AGM, so in 12 months. And we want to work with all of our existing member groups to get it right to make this transition. And here you can see 
um, what we currently think is going to be a blueprint for the new ALP assembly so that the existing groups will still operate just as they do now, special interest groups, member groups, steering groups for the um, journal, conference committees, and there might be other groups like CMOLD lead assessors, which are not a formal group right now, but that we will work together as a community to get that right, because there's many people, three and a half thousand or thereabouts, involved in ALT, and we want to make sure as many of them have a voice. So, just to um, maybe conclude, and um, my Sheila might have more things to add, here is how we propose to put this into practice. The trustees are putting it to the vote today to ask you to approve these new changes to the constitutions that will come into effect in 12 months time at the next AGM. And that's why we have a secondary resolution for the three trustees where previously there would have been the rotation of roles to retain their positions for 12 months to give us some stability until we have the new election processes and the old assembly in place and that we will work together as a community to put the ALT assembly into place over the next 12 months so that our governance, as Sheila said, will hopefully be more stable in terms of accountability and management day to day, but will also, I think importantly, give a greater voice to our membership all across the country and also internationally. So I hope, Sheila, that's covered some of the technical parts. Did you want to add anything? Um, not really, I think you've covered it very well. And just I suppose just to say that this is not a power grab by Martin and I. You know, we, we are going to retire. This is just a temporary... President for life. Yeah, but I'm not so sure about him. Yeah, but um, yeah, again, just to, to reiterate that um, this is really... Um, we see this as almost the final part of a, a jigsaw that's been coming together over the last couple of years around the future of the, org uh, the organisation. So, um, yeah, that's all I would really add to that. Yeah, has anyone got any questions though? Because I know there's quite a lot of information to take in. But obviously Marin has explained it beautifully and succinctly for everyone. Yeah, okay. So I don't know okay. Okay, we have a proposer. Thank you, Sarah. A seconder. Uh, and then we need to vote. So have we got our, our tellers? And again, please keep your hands in the air. So vote for... I can't read it from here. <laughs> With the Constitution attached and, the, and this resolution be adopted to the Constitution and CRO in substitution for and the exclusion of the existing Constitution as of 4th September 2019. So for... and we had the six proxy votes in. Yeah, okay, uh, against. Zero and the abstentions. One, two. James. <coughs> Thank you. So that's uh, passed. Just to explain to you, the, um, the, the legal advice was very clear that we had to have a secondary motion in order to make this possible for us to have the constitution adopted, which you've just passed, which is that the um, following trustees retain their roles, which is Sheila, Nicola, and Daniel, who are going to act as chair, vice chair, and treasurer, respectively. And that will then be in accordance with the new institution for the next 12 months. So we're going to need to do the same and vote on that as well. Okay, proposer. Go on then, James. <laughs> Seconder. Stephen. Um, and tell us again. Proposer. 
You don't get to sit down much, do you? So, uh, voting for um, that these trustees keep their roles. Six proxy votes uh, against the resolution. Zero uh, abstentions. So that's uh, recorded. Thank you. That's quite a big moment. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, good. We'll move on to Chairs Award, which is done by the chair. Our first Chairs Award. Over to you. So it's another first for the conference. So um, I know we're having another first tonight in terms of awards with the, the Research Awards as part of our Learning Technologies Award. But um, this is an award that we have talked about for a while, about maybe having another award for someone who doesn't maybe fit into the Learning Technologists Award, or maybe hasn't quite got the, has had long enough to get a lifetime, an honorary membership award, but someone who's making um, a significant contrib contribution to our community nonetheless. Um, and actually, we were kind of spurred into action by this by, by yourselves, by our community. And I think the application that we received actually made my decision very, very easy about this. Um, and I think the person who's getting this is, is, is normally behind the scenes of very many things, and particularly at the conference. And he makes sure that everything goes smoothly and that he meets our strategic object objectives, particularly around openness. Um, and not only does he provide almost single-handedly the live streaming for our com conferences, he's also developed a new platform for an open source submission platform for the conference. Um, and he shares that with the community as well. He's pr probably giving this away if you haven't guessed who it is already. Um, but I think the work that, that, Mark, uh, that this person does <laughs> in, <laughs> in terms of openness and, and particularly things like the Tags Explorer. It's not just the work he does for Alt, it's not just his job, which he does like all our, our Alt staff members incredibly well and goes above and beyond um, you know, what anyone would expect of him all the time. But he shares back wider to the community and I think in particular the work that he did in Tags Explorer, it allowed so many communities a view on their interactions that, they, that was never possible before. And uh, that continues to be used and he continues to develop that. And I think he's just such a great model, a role model for our community about being, you know, that person. Donna was talking about opening a window into your practice. I think this person has opened all the doors and all the windows and he's let so many people in and let people then open their own doors into their practice as well. So I'm, again, really, really delighted to award Martin Hoxie with the inaugural Cheers Award. It's a long walk from back there. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, now I have a job I can't explain to my parents, and now I, an award I can't explain to my parents. This is going well. It would have been easier if you just gave me a chair. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've been very fortunate to work uh, with a number of old members uh, in my career. And 
including Linda Craner, who was uh, one of the first people I worked with at a higher ed education institution. So it's, I think, very fitting that Linda's been awarded uh, today as well. Um, I, my first alt conference was actually 2009 at this very venue. And um, it was a great opportunity to see so many people I'd heard about and read about uh, face to face and the passion, the care and thought that I saw from a wide range of presentations has really informed my practice to this day. So it's really alt members that have um, created me, so it's your fault. <laughs> Martin. Uh, so it's now my uh, role to say thank you to members um, and trustees who are coming to the service. And we, have, we have some presents. Good. Oh, we get to give presents out. So first of all, thanks to members. Uh, journal editor Amanda Jeffries. Is Amanda here? Hey, come down, Amanda. alts um, <laughs> over the last um, several years and yes can I just reiterate what Martin said it's always been a very friendly caring and compassionate um, place to meet and share practice and it's been a privilege to make it part of my professional life so thank you very much and um, I'm sure there are lots of other people who will be able to carry on um, the good work that we're doing so uh, thank you Also say thank you to um, the blog editor, Santano Vasant. Uh, hello. Oh, good. Hi. Thank you for your work. Um, trustees who are coming into the term, uh, Neil Morris, trustee and chair of the editorial board. I think Neil's not here, is he? No, no, right. uh, and, uh, Neil did uh, some sterling work, particularly steering the, uh, the journal from the tricky period. Um, our very own James Clay, trustee and former chair of the FE committee. And my, my, my favourite proposer, so we have a gift for you. <laughs> um, my first alt was 2003 in Sheffield and I hated it. Um, I'm glad things have changed. <laughs> Um, but what I would say is when I joined the trustees, as um, I was elected, but I was also chair of the FE committee, I think over the last six years we have seen FE become much more engaged and interacting with ALT, and I'm really pleased to see that change. So I uh, feel like I've had a bit of an impact. So, uh, but here's on to good and better things. And finally, Shirley Evans, trustee and honorary secretary, but I think Shirley's not here, she? so she might be watching. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, which brings us on to the last thing, which is also another first, is that right? <laughs> it's just there's so many firsts. So uh, this year, we're having a, a CMALT ceremony. Um, so the closing highlight of the year's AGM. All members who have achieved or renewed the CMALT accreditation in the past 12 months are going to be invited onto stage for the first annual CMALT ceremony. So uh, if you're one of those people, please come up. Do you want me to read out the names? Okay, so I'm going to... Okay, so we have Lorna Campbell, Richard Beggs, Vicky Dale, Richard Clarkson, Adam Ells, Sarah Knight, Carl Luke, Chrissy Naranzi, Anya Patel, Agatha Stadza, Amy Sampson, Chris Sheridan, Lynn Taylorson, Julie Voss, Richard Walker, Gemma Witten. Oh no, and it goes over the page. Wow. <laughs> Oh, no, it's, just, it's, no, it's the same page. So, well, and if I've missed anybody out, please come down. Um, congratulations to you all.
well, I'm just thrilled to have um, been part of the, uh, the process and uh, supported my reflective practice, and it's a great honour to be the first senior certified member. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we officially close the AGM. Thank you, everyone, and see you next year.